I'm visiting a historic town in West Virginia, where I meet one of the most bizarre owners I have ever encountered. It's like a hoarder's anonymous. Junk on top of junk. Not only is she unaware of the damage she has done, the wall's rotten and you just go and paint over it. It's really solid. You can't just band-aid this place. But her unwillingness to change or even listen. You're boiling a burger. I eat them often. We're all pretending that this is good. Proves to be the biggest hurdle for me. You are seriously in denial. Just 60 miles from Washington, D.C., is one of America's most celebrated small towns, Harpers Ferry. Situated between the beautiful Potomac and Shenandoah Rivers is the Towns Inn. My wife, Anna, and I bought the inn for my mom back in 2007. We wanted it to be a good investment, but we also bought more with our hearts than our heads. I think it's the type of woman who's happiest when she's working, so we figured this would be a good place for her to work and enjoy um, the season of life that she's in. I'm a grandmother, so it's kind of grandmother's house. And I'm here mainly because I've retired from teaching. I love historical properties and decided that being an innkeeper would be a fun thing for the rest of my life. The Towns Inn is probably kind of like a circus. Karen's the ringleader, and you never know what's gonna happen next. Working for Karen is interesting. It's frustrating. She's pretty set in her ways, and it's her way or the highway. I think what makes someone a good mom isn't necessarily what makes someone a good boss or a good business owner. Karen, as a businesswoman, she don't have no experience, and is awful. Karen treats this place as both her business and her home, but more her home. I mean, her bedroom was in her office. You know, she'd sleep right there, pretty much in the dining room. I have asked Karen, is this your home or restaurant or is it an inn? You can't have it all three ways and expect to make money. Karen is absolutely a hoarder. Karen hoards her clothes, old shoes, books, baskets. Don't even get me started on those damn baskets. There's baskets everywhere. You could open a closet in a hotel room and see a pile of baskets. You could walk in our server area, open the fridge, and I bet there'd be a basket there because they're literally everywhere. Karen's in denial of what's wrong. She needs to separate herself from this place or things aren't gonna change. We are suffering, we are in debt, and the customers are going away. While we don't want to sell the towns in, I think we're certainly at a crossroads of just saying, is this becoming overwhelming for my mom? You know, she's not getting any younger, and it's just, it could be a potential train wreck. So if the ship is sinking, then we want to make sure we get our mom off of the boat before it sinks. Wow, look at this place. Gorgeous. Fresh food. Wow. Nice to see you. Karen Townsend. Karen, good to see you. I'm glad wow, you're what here. A gorgeous little town. Does it remind you um, of your, uh, well, isn't it kind of the quaint It reminds village? me of a movie set. I mean, it's just it's been literally. been used that many times. Has it really? Yeah. Wow. OK, I need to just have, have a quick you. look round, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll follow you. OK. Um, What's all this out here? What is that? Oh, that's just for watering the plants. Yeah, and we get a lot of hikers, and wow. it rains here sometimes. What is that? Oh, who knows? It's been here a huh? long time. It, it's like Freddy Krueger's hat. <laughs> who, 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 who's this? It's just there for anybody that wants to borrow oh, it. Oh, I see. And does anyone borrow that? Karen? No, they haven't no. yet. <laughs> Interesting. Another one as well. And what, are these <laughs> They're all for sale. They're, are they for sale? Yeah, see? Summer hats. And how much are these? Three, three, to, three to 20. Three? Depends. And this is how much? Uh, maybe not more. Whatever you want to offer. Well, We're very flexible. I'm not too sure if this is my style. And, uh, ooh, that's dusty That's there. a pretty special one. Um, why is it so special? Because it's got... Full of dust? Yeah, West Virginia. Uh, and this much... is almost heaven. How much is that one? It's whatever you offer. Are these secondhand? No, not that. Right. Some things are, but not that. <laughs> well, it's your business. Are you okay. selling many? Are you, are you busy? No. We don't really sell a lot of hats. I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. You've got customers in already. Hello. This Hi. is my Hi. friend, Hi. Sarah. Hi. Sarah. Oh. Nice to meet you. Oh, well, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Are you joining us for lunch today, or are you? 
I have no idea. I'm up to whatever. I'm here. I do. Um, what does that mean? She's just a family oh, friend. I'm friend. A, okay, right. I'm so you're not a customer. Person. I'm so sorry. Right. I'm not a customer. Is this a convenience store or? This is a is dining it? room. Wow. I mean, it's very claustrophobic in here. It is. Bits and bobs of everything. And those um, freaky dolls. Well, what are they for? They are sort of uh, souvenirs. Oh, are you selling lots? We do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, a bit dusty. A lot of people who come here have children. They're looking for something to take back. What about this one here, the Collector's Choice? How much is this one? I think 25. <laughs> Jesus, so dusty. I didn't know they were for sale. You didn't know they're for sale. How much does this room make a month? Um, I can't give you an exact figure because we record right. the purchases in with the restaurant sales. Yeah. But I would say 15% of sales. 15%? Mm hmm. Who drinks all this cider? Uh, no, actually, we use that in the restaurant. Jeez. Well, but we sell a lot of it. It's good in the summer, June, July, and August. Now, my daughter made those. Right. Uh, what are they? They're little hats for little children. It's full of dust and hair. And what's this? Hot pads, handmade. Hot pads? Mm hmm. Is that $60? Who buys this? People with children. I hope people with children. <laughs> That's full of dust inside. Well, you have to wash it before you use it. Look. And um, what's this? Uh, this is Sarah's journal. So she keeps a journal? Yeah. Wow. So it's, uh, it's almost like a novel. It is. And she puts sermon notes and telephone numbers and prices, wow. and she calls it her brain. Oh, public bathroom, decorate with baskets. Yeah, wow. she decorated the baskets up in my washroom. Oh, oh dear. Okay, wow, so, um, All right. what's that there? That is a bottle holder. You can put, like, a water bottle in oh. it. So it's, it does appeal wow. to hikers. I thought it was a jock strap. Do you know what that is? Oh, you know, it could It looks uh, like a jock yeah. strap. I hadn't thought of that, wow. but you got a point. <laughs> what's that down this, there? That's our bread, and then behind that is a closet where our potatoes are kept. But uh, are, the, are the loaves for sale, too? If someone asks for them, and hikers do sometimes, but normally it's um, it's just for the breakfast. We have toast. Are you expecting a lot of people? That's how much we go through in a few days, believe it or not. Really? Unfortunately, they're out of date as well. We couldn't. Are you serious? Second of November. Okay, you're right. Today's the sixth. Oh, that's very embarrassing. Yeah. Let's go to my uh, my room. What is that? Oh, these are my famous baskets. Baskets? Yeah, I love baskets and I collect them. Beautiful baskets for sale. Prices vary from $1 to $30. Stop it. $30. Well, so, Man. Some of them are very unique. You're telling me that families come in here and they mm -hmm. go for a hike and they buy these baskets on the way mm -hmm. to the mountains. Mm -hmm. Stop. This one's full of bugs. I guess I wouldn't buy that one, would you? $12. Mm -hmm. And that's with the cockroaches. We don't charge extra. Wow, that was twelve ninety nine. It's reduced down to five dollars. Oh, bugs in there as well. Bloody hell! Do you get them as gifts and then resell them? Uh, no, I just buy them when I find them places. I oh, what the hell is that? It's an Easter basket. Ah, that's an Easter basket. Mm -hmm. Fucking hell, poor bunny. And how much is that? One dollar. Yep. Well, wow, can you go any lower? Nope. Huh? We don't deal in cents. Ay ay ay, Karen, you're starting to scare me. Seriously, you are a basket case. That's what a good you... point. <laughs> Honestly, there's dust everywhere up here as well. When was the last time this place was dusted? Uh, theoretically, every day. Every Oh, every day? Yeah. This is my yeah. room named this after is the Potomac river. river. Wow. Bloody hell. Oh, dear. And this is it. Wow. Uh, wow. We have five rooms. This one is 130. Oh. Oops. Oh, shit. <laughs> what? what? What happened it's, there? You're taller than I am. See how it just lays up there on the on top of the... No, see, there you go. The pole's too short, my darling, look. So... There see. you go. <laughs> look, that's there. And this has been here since 2007, and it's never right. fallen down. Oh, really? Flip it now. OK. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, OK. Let's leave them there for now. Let's get some light in here. Okay, I'm gonna unpack and... Yeah, oh. that's private. What do you mean it's private? This is my bedroom. Uh, well, but this is off limits. It's got a lock on it. It's like a storage closet. But if I'm paying for the room, I'd like to get into my wardrobe. Well, you're not paying for that. You're paying for everything else. Well, then... Really? <laughs> We've got these little things you can put your suitcase on. But what's in here? My clothes. Your clothes? Mm -hmm. 
Seriously? Seriously. And it's very inconvenient when there are people here and I can't get to my clothes, but I live with it. Um, I want to hang my clothes in my wardrobe. 1840. We, we use hooks. Hooks? Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't you get me a key to open this? I need to hang my, uh, my jacket. Um, you'll just have to use a hook. <laughs> Um, once again, this is a rental. You're renting me a room. I'm here to help you, and I'd like to use my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Can um, I have a look inside then, please? Because I'm just worried in case you put somebody in there. There you go. <laughs> These are all your clothes? Mm -hmm. Literally all. That's it? That's it. Well, there's a few jackets in the wardrobe upstairs. So you have another... Right above wardrobe. us is another room. In another room that you mm -hmm. rent out with a padlock on? Mm hmm Come on. You're paying $130 for the owner's clothes to stay in the wardrobe. That's a first for me. Congratulations. I feel really uncomfortable about having my wardrobe full of all your clothes. I'll... I can cover it up, but it stays locked, so you can just ignore it. Can I just have half of this, then? Do you mind? Oh, OK. Um, Shelley? Shelley? <laughs> How much shit can one get <laughs> into the water? Gordon wanted uh, you to bring some of those clothes and things down. Just put them in my office, OK? Oh, my. Uh, oh, my. Do you see Karen wearing this stuff? No, Karen wears about two outfits. What do you mean she wears two outfits? I've never seen her in anything other than what she's wearing in denim and beige. It's like garments from the Civil War. And do you ever go through this stuff, Karen? Do you ever think, wow, I'll change colour today, maybe a bright colour with red or blue? Seasonally. Seasonally. Mm -hmm. So this is your fall look now. This is this is how we head into winter. In the summer, it's usually denim or a beige. Denim. OK, so no, no white after Labor Day, then? Never. Never. OK, thank you. Thank you. No problem. <sighs> wow, this is crazy. I mean, I've never met such a basket case like this in all my life. I mean, the place is cluttered. And it's almost like her belongings are everywhere. You turn left or right, there's either a basket or an item of Karen's clothing. What is that? Uh, <laughs> oh, pillowcases. What's in here? Looks like a blanket. More baskets. More baskets, of course. My room is cluttered. And here, look at that in there. Oh, my God. Look at all this stuff. Fuck. <laughs> How could you fit all that in there? That is, um... Definitely took skill. Where is she? Downstairs in the dining Ask her to come up with you, please. This is insane. Karen? Yes. Karen? Yes. Uh, look at all this stuff. Shoes, handbags, scarves. Just smell them. Oof. It smells like my shoes. <laughs> but they stink, my darling. They reek. You can't Let smell. Let me smell your shoes. <laughs> you no, they, smell they, they, smell, they smell like um, like my shoes, yeah. They shouldn't be in my room. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, in my mind, you rented everything except this wardrobe, which I Well, you didn't tell me that when like you took my money. Is. You didn't ask. Uh, and what about these? Those are extra sets of linens. Yeah, but uh, why do I want all them underneath my bed? Now, you don't need to be under the bed, do you? But we'll get this out for you and I'll just put it downstairs. Right. Please. Unbelievable. I just want to sleep in a room that's not clustered. Uh, oh. Watch your step. Watch out. I have never experienced a place like this before. Dolls, hats, baskets full of bugs, a wardrobe full of the owner's clothes. To be honest, I'm frightened about the meal I'm about to eat. What's that? What is that? That looks like a little something that... Can I buy this? Absolutely. Chopsticks? Why would you go hiking with a fucking pair of chopsticks? And a little wooden spoon. I'll take that. You can add it to my towel. Brenda, I'm seating um, Gordon. Yes, ma'am. <sighs> right here. I'm going to start you with an ice water, OK? Yes, please. Okay. And Brenda's going to be... How for... often does that thing go through? Once an hour, at least. Yeah. Any chance it can go through the hotel? No, I wouldn't think so. No. What is going on? Jesus Christ. The 
Towns Inn and Harpers Ferry, almost heaven. Certainly not my room, that's for sure. Hey, how you doing? How are you, hey, All right, good Lamont Johnson. Um, first name is? Lamont. Lamont, good to see you. What do you do? Uh, a little bit of everything. Big question. Where do you store your clothes? Oh, do I have any of your clothes in my room? Oh, no, no, sir. No, because no, we're the same size. Oh, no. <laughs> Shoes under oh, the bed? I promise. No. Toys under the bed? None of mine. Promise me? I promise. Excellent. I, I there, promise. Man. Yes, sir. Good to see and you. Nice meeting you. Likewise. All right. Are you ready? Nice to see you. How long have you been here? Two years. Two years. How's it gone? It's a little frustrating sometimes. In which way? Miss Karen is just very chaotic. She's eccentric. We have to knock on her door when we come in and let her know we're here. Right. And sometimes she'll slam the door in your face, or you never know what you're going to get. Really? She, yeah. I've never quite come across an owner uh, that is right, right. so out there. And all this stuff outside. It's is that a home. fridge outside? That's our um, kitchen products. Outside? Outside. Yes. And this fridge here? That is for the owner's stuff. They keep their food in there. Stop it. No, look, he's gonna Stop. go look. Oh my god. Stop. Let me move this. Seriously? Oh, I'm scared. What is that? What is that? What is that? I have no idea. Jesus. I don't know. That is gnarly, huh? Gnarly. He said that's gnarly. So you have your own personal fridge as well? Yeah? Yeah. Outside? Well, there's no room inside, yeah. Okay, and what's that over there? Over there? It? Yeah. This is where we store our produce. This is for the restaurant? Yes. Seriously? Look at that. Ugh. Oh, oh, man. I can show you the receipts that we buy but, but fresh But I'm not interested in the receipts. Fresh every week or every season? Yeah. No, touch it. Week. I don't want to touch it. You don't want to touch it? No. But you want to serve it? Karen, look, it's disintegrated I, in my I hands. I don't want to touch it. More fridges down there? This way. Bloody hell. Man, how old are these freezers? This one's this... about three years old. No. When was the last time it was defrosted? I don't know. Bloody hell. And all this stuff stays outside? Yeah. Jesus, and what's that's in here? A, a fridge. Uh, so that's more like a fridge. So it's a fridge operating? We use it as a fridge. Mm -hmm. But there's more bread in here. Yeah. Uh, this is how much we need. We keep running out of stuff. You do not need all this. Absolutely impossible. Well, What's I'll that? I'll ask the egg rolls. Egg rolls. Mm -hmm. But you're just hoarding stuff, Karen. And that? Do you smoke? I don't. I've never smoked it's disgusting. in my life. Me neither. I tried when I was 17. Sausage, brats. This is insane. You've never smoked cigarettes. Anything else? I would graduate from high school in 67, and that kind of marijuana, but I took one puff and it made me sick and I just... All right. Um, you know, I was hungry, but I've sort of... Uh, lost, lost your lost appetite. My, uh, let's start off with mac and cheese. OK. What else? The fiesta stew. OK. Uh, let's have a trout as well. A trout. OK. Thanks. Okay. I'll get that going. Right back. Oh my God. OK, here's his ticket. OK, look. That's how we ordered it. So mac and cheese. Yeah. Are these yours? Yes. Well, I bought them. Oh, from my store. From your store. <laughs> okay. No wonderful, I like them. Oh. So mac and cheese. Thank you, ma'am. The mac wow. and cheese. That's mac and cheese. That's the mac and cheese. Uh, why is it all split on top? It looks like a soup. It was in the fridge, and then they microwaved it. He's scared to eat it. That is the weirdest and the most plastic-looking mac and cheese I've ever seen in my entire life. There's no seasoning in there. There's no okay. salt. Yeah, please. Absolutely. That deserves to be put under the bed. Mac and cheese. He said it needs to be put under the bed. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Now we're off to Fiesta Stew. Fiesta Stew. So we have a Mexican-themed stew. Correct. And um, when was the Fiesta Stew made? I can go ask. Please. <sighs> Fucking hell. Hey, Jill, when was the Fiesta stew made? What's the date on it? Let me check. 11 1. Okay. November 1st. Uh, and the, today, today's the 6th. Today's six. the 6th. Six. Six. Yes. So nothing's ever fresh. 
Mm, never. <laughs> that was terrible. Do you want some hot sauce? No, no, no I'm fine. Okay. I'll, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll move on to the next course. I'm going to be take that away. Okay. When was this uh, caught? <laughs> oh. Oh. Yesterday, at 20 miles away. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, trout. And Jeff said he caught it yesterday. So he caught it from the it, frozen food section. Correct. Wow, it's just watery. Mm. How sad is that? Okay. Yeah, that's a disaster. Disaster. All oh, right. Disaster trout. It's disaster trout. What's wrong with it? It's watery, and he knows it wasn't caught yesterday or today. Sarah, what are you doing? Putting labels, um, magnet labels. What, do not eat? No, I'm putting ice cream. You're putting labels on a freezer to tell the Muppets in the kitchen that that's ice cream in that container. Kieran had asked me to do it. And when you work here, Miss Sarah, do you get paid or are you on the payroll? Oh, no, I'm not on the payroll. It's all volunteer. I visit a lot because I'm semi-retired right now. Also, this is my mini bio. Wow, blood yes, drives. Sir. I run blood drives every two months. Right. Wikipedia editor? Mm-hmm, I've done that. Wow, you write art, travel, tutor, acronyms. You teach Greek. I do. Inspire, loyalty. <laughs> You're a busy lady. Yes, sir. And then, um... And then I run circles around naughty problems. So, um, I run circles around naughty problems. Yeah, like, well, if there's something that needs to be figured out, I yeah. try and figure out a way to solve the issue. How about but... a big circle around Karen? I try to do that. I may have just a quick look at the labels. And any, other, any other labels? Sure, cheesecake, just things. Chicken breasts, guacamole, veggie burgers, tortillas. And you just stick them on the side of the freezer? Yes. Let me tell you what you should be making a sign. That's the only thing that should go on there. Do not enter. Ooh, that's brutal. Can you put that on a magnet and stick that on each freezer and one on Miss Karen's fridge as well? Thank you. Fuck me. The town's inn is much worse than I expected. The owner not only has a hoarding problem with her clothes, but she's doing the same with her food. Um, Lamont. Yes, sir. Why are you taking these? Uh, she wanted me to remove these until she can but find I, something else to do I with I only it. took out one bag out of my wardrobe. Where's the rest of them from? Um, I have no idea. No. I just noticed she had clothes upstairs, and she asked me to move them. <laughs> Lamont, seriously? Mm-hmm. Go and get her for me, please. Yes, sir. Holy shit. I mean... <laughs> Sir, he said he want to talk to you. Okay. Miss Karen. Yes. Is this, is this all yours? That's what came from what? out of the wardrobe. Another wardrobe. No, 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 the one that you emptied. No, I had one bag full of stuff. No, this but, is the stuff that was in the black wardrobe but, in your room. But where's this stuff going now? To his basement to till I can sort his it out. His basement. Mm-hmm. Because I don't have any place to store it here. What is it? It's my clothes. clothes. Her clothes. The things that came out of the black wardrobe that we keep locked up in the Potomac room. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever ask yourself if you have a problem holding on to things? <laughs> have you ever heard of the word hoarder? Miss Karen, this is your business. This is your hotel, not your junk shop. Mm -hmm. Can you get the team out from the kitchen? I'd like to have a quick word with you all in the terrace. Yes, sir. Um, good luck with that stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Miss Thank Karen, you. can we meet the team on the yes, terrace? Sir. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six bags. You want to check the things for bugs as well. I'm in shock. Are you joining us, Miss Sarah, yes, sir. or are you still writing labels? No, I'm not writing labels. No, anymore. let's go. I arrive, the facade of the outside looks beautiful. I walk through the door and it's just like a cluster of shit. Crap everywhere. Moldy bread in a reception, freaky dolls, up to the bedrooms that's like just hideous. Wardrobes packed with clothes from 30 years ago. And I had to ask Miss Karen to get rid of the padlock so I can open up the wardrobe uh, and put my clothes in there. Honestly, the place is just ridden with, with this. It's like a hoarder's anonymous. Obviously, I needed a place to put my clothes, and so that was where I, I put them. You can't just hive off a wardrobe because it's full of your crap. 
Like I said, I've, um, it's just a storage area. No, but it's not a storage, a storage area, area, just like your fridge yeah. downstairs. This place is played with junk on top of junk, freezers, overbearing, overfull. And as for the disgusting way that the fridge is kept with the mouldy salad, this salad that's festered and it's like, it's almost sort of disintegrating the center, rotten. Can I just quickly go on the size of the menu? It's too big. The kitchen's about as big as my wardrobe. It's too, it's But way why are you telling me that when the owner's standing next to you? I told her that, told her. but we, we, we have told her. Mm. She won't listen. Mac and cheese all separated. Every mouth was full of grease because it was so cooked in the microwave. And that's the way we do it. People say that we, we've got the best food in town and the freshest. Oh, stop there. Now you're sounding slightly oh, bizarre. The best food in town? Are you OK? Well, it depends on how you define OK. I'm OK by, sure? by my standards. But mac and cheese, I mean, come on. You know, what, what are you looking for now? Are you taking Mine's notes? Done. Yeah. Are you taking notes? Yeah, you're making some good what? points. And you're laughing. What's so funny, then? Help me to understand. I don't have anything to do with the food. So I don't know what you're doing. I've got no idea what you're doing. What I ask her to, basically. So she does what you say? She, she helps me, yeah. Jeff, is this correct? I tell him to do one thing, and Sarah tells him to do one thing. Miss Sarah tells you what? She just... And... She said she's a volunteer. She tells my crew what to do, and it pisses me off. I get, I get mad, then they blame it on but me. She's because... got no authority to do that. I know. So, but... Jeff, you've never talked to me about this. I have told Wait you. A I have told you about this. Is this is this true? Is this where you treat the staff? Nothing more humiliating to the team that are on the ground, keeping this place open, and then a stranger comes in and tells them what to do. Well, she's not a stranger. She's been coming to here. To them, she is because she's not exactly qualified to run this place. This is so screwed up. This is bizarre. Ain't nobody hearing me what I'm saying. And what kind of message are you sending? The menu needs to be down. A menu like this? There must be 50 items on there, which 49 of them are turfed out of the bloody freezer. This place is so messed up. It's a mess, a disgusting, festering mess. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. I don't know. I'm just so fucking embarrassed. I know. I know. I know. So far, I've learned that not only does Karen hoard items, but she's also a controlling owner. Tonight, I want to see how the town's inn operates during the evening. How are you? Good. And um, your name is? My name is Tyler. Tyler. What do you do? Um, I'm a server. OK, great. Tyler and hello. Hi, I'm Gage. Gage. Nice what are you two doing out here? We are both servers. Come Sorry, in so I can talk to you. Same Where's the best place to hang this? I can hang it for you, sir. I mean, uh, if we didn't have these filthy hats laying around. I know. Why do we have filthy hats in the hallway? Mm, looks like so, a, it looks like a thrift shop, sir. Thrift shop. How old are you guys? I am 17. I am also 17. 17. Objectively, what's wrong with this place? Well, I think that we're not well organized. I also think that we need to work on cleanliness. Cleanliness? Yes. Wow, is it that bad? It can be. Uh, so what do you think is dirty? Well, uh, honestly, <laughs> uh, probably you... the kitchen and uh, some of Why the Why are you going under the mat like that? What, 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 you what? asked what was dirty, so I mean, common things that we try to clean every day that we can't always keep an eye on. Show me where the kitchen is, please. Yeah? OK. Thank you. What this happened is... here? Sarah likes to paint on the walls sometimes. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's this mess here? This is a painting, and I A didn't... what? <laughs> a painting? Yes, it's sir? like someone shat all over the wall. <laughs> is that hygienic? You're painting the walls of the kitchen? I have no idea. I you have no idea. So why did you do it? The town's end became Sarah's town's end, even though she had nothing to do with owning the establishment. Karen, did you see the mess in the kitchen? She's painted the wall. Let me show you something. Just oh, so in can... here? Yeah. 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 Have, have you seen it? Yes. It's one of my favorite things. You don't it's like it? It's one of your favorite things. No, seriously. <laughs> I'm live, maybe not well. Did you see the mural in the dining room? That is a children assist in guests. That's unique, isn't it? 
What is that? Well, it started as a crack in the wall, and I asked Sarah to make a vine. Is there anywhere else you've painted? There is a... Uh... In my room. Can you show me, please? What have you done to my wall? This and is so weird. You paint over cracks. I Look know. at this here. I know, and this apparently is something new that is falling apart. Wow. I mean... It must be wet. Wet? It's soaking wet. The plaster's just... Whoa. <laughs> These are bits of card. That's correct. It was a temporary fix. So it's not a mural. It's business cards. You put your cards on here and then you paint over the cards. You should make a label for this. Decaying wall. Do not paint over it. I mean... What, what? The wall's rotten and you just go and paint over it. It was meant as a temporary fix. The wall is rotten. You're right. And you just paint over it. You can't just go filling cracks with tacky painting. Look at it down here. You've gone over cracks and holes. Look. Jeez. Ah. Uh, what's that in there? Um, I put some sort of a mesh because it was uh, a hole and I didn't want anything to come through it. Jesus. I wish you wouldn't use that word. What? Hole? What do you want me to sing? Fucking hallelujah. That'd be better. <coughs> <coughs> can you get me Karen? I can get you Karen. Please? Jesus. Watch your language, sir. What in the fuck? Miss Karen. <gasps> oh my goodness. You know, the whole thing just started coming off. The wall needs repairing and she's just painting over it. And then secondly, she found a big hole here, started putting her cards on there, and then painted over that. Mm -hmm. But inside the hole... Oh, Jesus. This is not a paper mache <laughs> What is she doing to your hotel? It doesn't then... go outside. I mean, it's not a hole to the outside. It's not a hole that, to the outside? No. What does no. that mean? The stone wall is out there. Oh, we're sleeping on the inside. We're not sleeping on the outside. Right. So you're not going to get any cold drafts or anything through there. So it's just like I don't get to use the wardrobe and the hole's on the inside, not on the outside, and we can just do whatever we want. Oh, it's She's solid. stuffing... It's really solid. It needs and it's stone out there. Yeah, we can't just paint over that. Well, you can. You we can... did, but... And then stick Brillo pads in a hole. You can't just band-aid this place. Oh, my good gosh. I just wash my hands. In order of French bread as an app. All right. Um, what is that there? Sports bar? Are these TV screens? What are those? Microwaves. microwaves. How many microwaves have you got? Well, there's four, four here and one in there, and that's five. Five one in microwaves. In there. There's one in there. And two chefs. Two chefs. Oh, my God. Everywhere I turn, there's just junk everywhere. Well, this is cooking stuff. Trust me, I know what cooking stuff is. This is not cooking <laughs> stuff. OK. How does this kitchen function? Give me a little tour. It's, it's very challenging. It's very, very challenging. What's that in there? That's a burger that I'm heating up. A boil? Yeah. You're boiling a burger? I'm just heating it back up. When you say heating it back up, why are you cooking it from fresh? We make them ahead of time. This is what we got here. We don't... A boiled burger? Are you aware the burgers are boiled? Um, no. Do you think a customer would want a burger boiled in water? They seem to like them. Just taste the water. Oh, do I have to? I'm going to say <laughs> it's funny. Not... You won't taste it. Well, OK. Well, I just... Tastes like water with beef in it. That seems OK. When they fix it up on a nice Kaiser roll with lettuce, tomato, onion... Oh, come on. I need a tongue, please. I need a set of tongs. Ah, please, shit. No, this is a joke. Oh, this is yeah. terrible. Every Boiled day. burger. I'm appalled to learn that the town's inn boils pre-cooked burgers. Oh, Brenda, here, well, just show me the table with the burger. And what's more frustrating is how Karen doesn't think there is anything wrong with that. Come with me two seconds. I'm going to quickly show you something. Perfect. Let me take, take that. Me? Absolutely. So that's your burger. Out of respect as a customer, yeah. uh, I'm not going to sit and watch you eat that shit. Let me show you. So, this is the chef? Yes. Can you just explain how you cook that? We pre-cook it. No, start from the top, please. I'm we, not going to let you eat that. We um, pre-cook them. You made the burger when? Um, Gia, when were them burgers made? Yesterday, I believe. Yesterday. Just explain 
How you reheated them for the gentleman? I reheated them. I put I put water in there and I put the burger in there. Were you expecting a fresh burger or some yeah, shit we heated from yesterday? Fresh, yes. I will give you a fresh burger. My okay? apologies. Sir. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, this ticket refused their food. Okay. Young man. Out of respect for our guests, take the ladies outside and show whether we keep the freezers again. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, just bear with us for two minutes, but yes. we're just going to show you something I'd, I'd like done. you to see. Yes. So just follow me. This is just right down here. Watch your. Out here? Yes. Um, right here next to the trash, yes. Um, this, this is our lasagna. This is our trout. We got more sausage, ice cream. These are your egg rolls right there. So I just have frozen egg rolls from here. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We've got two freezers and everything's scattered. Very cluttered. I mean, Karen has always uh, looked at this as her home. Obviously, it is embarrassing, but it's a serious situation that needs to be solved. You okay? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay. But I think I, I just canceled my order. My apologies. I discovered that today, and I, out of respect for you as customers, I can't sit here and fake you eating that shit. So I'm hoping that you can skip around the menu and order something a little bit more. Thank you. Keeping. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you so much. Didn't you have purple glasses earlier? Yeah. They, they are. Changed. Oh, that is so cool because they look like they're dark brown or black. Oh, did I have yeah, the light? Black. That is so cool. This is insane. Yeah. Sarah claims to work at the Townsend. Here's a free postcard for everybody. When I go to serve tables, she'll randomly show up. We'll talk to tables. Um, I've seen her frustrate people. Sarah. No. Miss Sarah. Is someone calling me? I have to go. No. Me. Bye. Yes, sir. They don't need to hear your life story. They want to sit and have a romantic drink on the terrace. Leave them alone. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. In and out. There are okay. other tables. Man. Okay, we're going to need a rotisserie chicken. That's the rotisserie chicken. You get it from the freezer. Yep. Disgusting. Displaying the rotisserie chicken, please. Show the table. Yeah. This is the dish of the day. It's our rotisserie chicken. It was roasted six months ago in a grocery store, and we're serving it for twelve dollars. On the menu, it's got rotisserie chicken. Yeah. You Cut buy them. them at a grocery store. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you freeze them, and you reheat them in the microwave. Not in the microwave. It went in the microwave. What is going on here? Well, we have a menu and. We just do it. I mean, no, it's just pathetic. How many of your guests tonight think that their chicken's been roasted in house? Maybe half. Let's just let them come in and let's, mm -hmm. let's double check. Ladies and gentlemen, so sorry, I can just have your attention for 30 seconds. How many of you, if you're going to order the roast chicken this evening, would expect it to be fresh roasted in house? Could you raise your hands, please? I think it's everybody. A lot of people say it's it's good. I no. agree that it no, should these, be. The, 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 these yeah. guests have come out of their homes to come yeah. and eat. What I'm not going to do is attempt to pull the wool over their eyes because they deserve to know what's going on. The burgers were cooked yesterday, reheated in a pan, boiling them in water, and I'm flabbergasted. So you need to take a real good look at yourself and stop bullshitting customers immediately. Otherwise, I'm out of here. I'm so sorry, but you, as customers, deserve better. And this has nothing to do with the TV program. I, I promise you now, it's based on the bad practices that's going on in that kitchen. So my apologies, but I'm not going to allow you to eat. You're not going to act responsible for it. I will. We're shutting it down. We're shutting it down. You just sent everybody home. Stop. Stop. That is possibly the worst thing I've seen so far. How do you reheat that? In the microwave. In the microwave. It doesn't even hit an oven. But we used to cook them fresh, right? So what, what I changed? I wasn't here. Yeah, so what happened? Stop. I'm not serving it. Stop. What happened? Ask Karen. I ain't the one that bought the chickens. Uh, I have a rather have a rotisserie thing back here. I can have fresh chicken. We need but new equipment. This is what it's resulted in. Yeah. This is what we're serving. You can't buy this from a grocery store. No, you can't. Sprinkle it with pasta and expect to call yourselves a restaurant. I know what you I know what you're saying. And you just, like a butterfly, fly around just painting all little bits of shit over holes. This is insane. I'm done. I'm, I'm upset. I'm, I'm feeling sick. And I've never seen such a disgusting mess in all my fucking life. This embarrassment to you, 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 and me. 
and I'm not going to stand there and watch you surf shit like that and take customers' money. What is this? I eat them often, the rotisserie. You they... eat them often? Mm -hmm. What does that say? I guess it's just that I don't. What does that mean to you? You eat this crap often. Come on. You're running a hotel. The burgers were cooked yesterday. Well, when I ate them, and I always tell them they tasted good to me. Oh, so. God. Where's the burgers that you cooked? Down here, sir. Get them. I, my understanding is he pat in the mouth and then put them in the oven. How long for? Probably about 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes in an oven. How many of your customers expect burgers to be cooked like that? Baked in the oven for 20 minutes, so there's no colour on there. Cooled down, stuck in a Ziploc bag, out, boiled in water. Should we go and do another survey? What's 80% Chuck? It's just you're a in hamburger. Denial. You are seriously in denial. Miss Sarah, would you like a bite? No, thank you. Why not? It's not cooked right. Well, should I boil it up for you and get it warm? What colour is that? It's white. That's what frustrates me. We're all pretending that this is good. I thought that's what the cooks... No. I mean... Come on. Not, I mean, I'm not trying to blame it on the cooks, you but... You can't blame it on me because ain't nobody hearing me. I'm amazed you're not shut down. Freezers lined up next to a dumpster. What lives outside in those passageways next to dumpsters? Bat, rats, and alley cats. Yeah, cat. bats, rats, and mice. You are in denial. You have a big problem. You've got no idea that this place is crumbling. And you're just going through the motions. Mr. Ramsey, my guests want to leave. Your guests want to leave? Yes. That's the best thing I've heard all day. Can I fucking join them? Bye. 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 Are we serving food at all? Should I let them Young leave? Man. And we're in danger of even being shut down by the health authorities. And there is no fucking way I'm going to stand there yes, sir. and watch this go. shit being yes. reheated and served. So sorry, we're not moving forward. Tonight on Hotel Hell, a near-fatal accident has left Mississippi hotel owners in a desperate situation. I broke both of my ankles and my back in two places. The business is failing, and with not enough money coming in, this married couple have lost their home. You live in here? Yes. There's not even a window. You have to do what you have to do. If I don't do something soon, they will lose everything. We have two children. I would like for them not to have to worry about their mom and dad. You've let this business swallow the both of you up. I think you deserve something better. I only hope I'm not too late. <laughs> Hotel Chester is located in Starkville, Mississippi, home to the Mississippi State University. Husband and wife, David and Suki Mollendor, bought the hotel in 2000. Before buying the Chester, David traveled the world as a hotel troubleshooter. Well, I've worked in the hotel industry 39 years. Thank you for calling Hotel Chester. Wanted to try and settle down and give our kids one stable place to be. Oh. One of us got to get taller. <laughs> to begin with, a 36-bedroom hotel was a real success, packed with students and locals. How you doing? Good. <laughs> <laughs> then a sudden tragedy hit the family. David was coming home and was uh, involved in a, a major auto accident. We thought we lost him. That changed all of us overnight. He crushed his feet and was bedridden for almost six months. It's a little dated. The report is very dated. In David's absence, standards dropped and customers stopped coming. Well, we were losing so much money that I had to file for bankruptcy. The financial losses have been so bad, the bank foreclosed on their home. So now they're living in the hotel. Living in the hotel, working together in the hotel. I feel tired and I feel uh, out of sync with the world. They couldn't afford payroll, 
So Suki left her job in real estate and took over as chef and temporary manager. It was my idea that we open a sushi restaurant. Never worked in any restaurant kitchens before in my entire life. But I knew how to make the sushi. My mouth's confused. But despite her best intentions, with no formal training, oh. she's struggling. Oh. Uh -oh. oh, where's my knife? Suki spends all her time in the hotel, so she's blind to the tens of thousands of students and tourists who could be potential customers. And the hotel's bedrooms and dining room are empty most nights. I just need those entrees. Yeah, but I guess they're coming. You know, I see it in my parents' eyes. I see that they're physically exhausted, that they're mentally drained. My mom, she used to be lively, vibrant. She's honestly half the woman she used to be. Man, I forget. I'm losing my mind. When I came to this place, I was 180 pounds of twisted blue steel, sex appeal, and mucho hell. And this old bitch has worn me down to 200 pounds of flab, gab, and total no mas. With almost no money coming into the hotel, David and Suki are hanging on by a very thin thread. I need Gordon to help my parents because if this hotel doesn't change, it's we lose everything. This is it. I'm in Starkville, Mississippi's college town. I'm on my way to the Hotel Chester, Mississippi State University, founded in 1878. Any hotel with a college on their doorstep should be absolutely thriving, not just for the students, but with their parents as well. I can't wait to check into the Hotel Chester. Where is this place? I can't even see the sign. Got to know where it is. How are you? Hey, I'm looking for the Hotel Chester. I've never been there before. Yeah, you never been there? It's one yeah. Now I can find yeah. it. I've gone round three times. It's easy to miss. Easy to miss. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I can't see any signs. Well, there may be one sign, but I mean, it's not, right. it's not too big. Man. Okay, great. <laughs> Bring on glass. Thanks. Thank you. Enjoy. The students never go to the Chester, despite the fact that it's right next to the campus. Weird. There we are there. Historic Hotel Chester entrance. Well, such a huge building and such a tiny sign. It's madness. Finally. Morning, sir. Hey, good how are morning. You? How are you? Good to see you, Gordon. Good to see you, and I'm David Gordon. David, nice to see you. Well, I finally found the place. That is so confusing there. You know that. There's no sign on Main Street. I drove straight by. And see him on the corner of the building? A tiny sign saying it's historic. That, that's what's historic about oh, it. That's, it's, that's... it's historically been a bad entrance. Now we have you in an executive king room. And then here's two keys for you, because I'm giving you two because men don't follow instructions as well as women. Okay. Or in case you get lucky, hell yes. <laughs> So you're a hands-on owner. Uh, you run the desk all by yourself? My wife is the chef. She's taught herself. You can I meet this lady? Well, can I finish my spiel? Oh, I thought you'd already finished. So uh, breakfast is included. We do have fresh cut fruit. That's nice to know, fresh cut fruit. We, what uh, would be the alternative? Canned? No. Uh, no fruit, I think. Oh. Would be the <laughs> I love your sense of humor. <laughs> it's dry and very funny. Fresh cut fruit for breakfast. Yes, sir. Nice. Now, I just want you to know I'm not always at the desk. OK. But you'll be able to recognize me even if I'm walking away from you, because I'm the one who looks like he's riding a chicken. Riding a chicken? Yeah. I've never ridden a chicken. You have to show. Oh. Well, you just have to look at my legs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get Suki, OK? OK, great. That poor chicken. OK, now. I've got a guest that wants to meet you. Oh, okay. uh oh, what do you do with that? I am making tamago. Gordon is here to help us out, and I'm terrified, but at the same time, I, I'm so excited. Okay. Oh. Hi. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you. And don't worry, I've had worse than wet hands. Nice to meet you. I washed my hands. Uh, that's very kind. Thank you for that. Uh, and Thank you. Suki, right? Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. <laughs> What's it like working with your wife? I love my wife, so it's mm -hmm. nice to be around her until she gets her 
nose out of joint. She has a chef's temperament. If okay. you're not familiar with it, right, they, well. they can fly off the handle pretty easy. What's your background? I'm a hotel guy. I was in Vietnam, and I went to so hotel, the hotel school. So you qualified uh, as a hotelier? Well, so in my view, yeah. Well, that's great. That's good, good to hear. <laughs> Graduated with a major in hotel and restaurant management, and I've been in the business almost 40 years. So in a nutshell, what's wrong with a hotel? That's a question. We're not sure. We don't think it's a quality issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, neither for our rooms or our food and, and beverage. Why don't you both show me to the room? Okay. I've been a general manager of a lot of hotels. I eventually became a turnaround guy to take on problem properties. So my big surprise here is that I'm having a hell of a time trying to turn this thing around. We just call it an executive okay. king. Oh, dear. Okay. This is it? Yes, sir. What is that? Swing? It's uh, leather, but it's a uh, rough leather and very difficult to clean. And it's so bland. I mean, it's like a cheap motel chain. I feel like I'm in the witness protection program. This is depressing here. So when was the last time the roof were touched? 2003. 2003, so 10 years ago. Yeah. It feels like something out of the 1970s. Our hotel rooms are dated, you know, we try to call it period furniture. Yeah, I don't know what to say. It always tells you that. A place is on the decline when you walk in, you've got walls that are a mess, scuffs everywhere, and big marks on the sofas that you're expected to pay good money to sit down in. So far, I'm not digging it. I'm going to unpack, and then like to come down and um, have a bite to eat. Suki, so what's your experience in the kitchen? My father had a sushi restaurant in Washington, D.C. Parents of a Japanese yeah, restaurant? had. My did you father passed kitchen? away. Of course. But did you work in the kitchen? No, just washing dishes. <laughs> Anyway, listen, I'm going to unpack. Thank you. OK, hey. Yeah. Thank Good you. to see you, likewise. Yes, and nice I'll pop down and have a bite to eat. OK? okay? Right, thank you. So, you know, I feel like the guy who walked into a bar with a big frog on his head, went up to the bar and asked the bartender for a drink. And the bartender said, man, I tell you, you got a problem, don't you? And the frog said, yeah, I'll I sure do. Babe. Can you cut this ward off my ass? <laughs> And God, can that man talk? Bars and restaurants in a vibrant college town like this are always packed at lunchtime. But this place is dead. I'm Lindsay. How are you? Good. There you go. I'm going to get you something to drink. Do you have some ice cold water? OK. Please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my darling. Um, what would you recommend? Strawberry field sushi is uh, very popular. It's a little bit sweeter. I'll try it. Las Vegas as an appetizer as well. And then, oh, the secure. Five individual rolls rolled into one. I don't know how you execute all that Japanese food on that menu when you're not trained. It doesn't quite make sense. Oh, my goodness. This is not good. There's not a lot of people in Starkville that like our sushi. It's a little bit different from what other places in Starkville have. Oh. God, that's slow. Suki runs her kitchen the way she wants to. It always takes too long in between tickets, but there was really nothing I could do about it. This food is taking way too long. I've been waiting over an hour for raw fish. Oh, my God. I can't take this anymore. Oh, God. Damn it. I'm at Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester, and I've been waiting for my lunch for a very long time. Damn it. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> I nodded off there. My God. Does the sushi usually take this long? Yes, sir. What is this one? Las Vegas. Ooh, oh, my God. Salmon cream, cream cheese and asparagus, and then it's deep fried and uh, comes with a jalapenos. Fried salmon with cream cheese. Disgusting. What a strange combination. Very weird. It doesn't work for me, that one. I mean, it's just um, greasy. We um, can get this out of the way. As quick as possible. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. This is dreadful. 
My first impressions of the food here is that it's as bad as the rooms. Sakura. Sakura. And there's cream cheese in the middle. Look at that thing. So it's pretty big, right? So how are you supposed to get it in your mouth? I've never eaten it before. Let's try. Come on. Me? We're in this together. Oh, no, you ordered this one all on your own. That's yours. That's yours, there. Ready? Open wide, please. Wait, there is no way this is going to fit my mouth. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Uh-uh, I can't do it. Now I know how my granddad feels when he puts his new teeth in. <laughs> Can uh, I throw uh, it away now? Yeah. So you took one little bite? I did. Damn. Disaster. Total disaster. How did it taste, by the way? I'm very good. The Sakura is very chewy. Suki does try her best, but she has no idea what she's doing. What's wrong with the Sakura? Bland, ugly, chewy, strange combination. Chewy. Yep. And impossible to put in your mouth. Let me tell you about my sushi. I'm not a Morimoto or Nobu. Absolutely not. I'm doing my best, and I respect rice. What is this one? Strawberry field. Now, look at that. Strawberry on sushi. I'm behalf of every Japanese chef in America. I'd like to apologize. It's very weird. Which part is so just, you just, weird? You, you wouldn't cover white tuna with strawberries and then glaze it. Strawberry fields. I'd rather fucking eat a beetle. It's too sweet. Strawberries don't belong with tuna. I am frustrated that Gordon does not like uh, my sushi. I've tried all I can. How you doing, honey bun? Uh, he doesn't like any. He doesn't like any of it. No. <laughs> so, truthfully, what is wrong with this place? Lack of business. So on an average weekend, how many guests would you do? On a busy weekend, maybe 12 people. Are they in-house guests, hotel Usually. guests? Usually. So virtually nobody from the outside? Correct. Jesus. Anyway, where are the owners? Can you uh, tell me where they are? Sure. Thank you. They've got just 36 bedrooms, yet on a busy night, just 12 guests eat here. With food that bad, I'm not surprised. Congratulations on the longest lunch I've ever had in my entire cooking career. That was 97 minutes. Yeah, and half of it was raw. As a novice cook, why are you making sushi? It's crazy. I'm trying my best to, to at least introduce Mississippi. Let's eat a little bit healthier. There's nothing healthier with my lunch. Maybe a health warning. Surely you should be giving the locals what they want to eat. That's why they come. Well, no, no, talking no. to Lindsay, the only customers we get now are the ones staying in the hotel, which is practically no one. The business is on his ass. And how much debt are you in? Over $900,000. $900,000. Right. We are in debt. Please don't say you don't know. So far, Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester has been a massive letdown. Hotel Chester entrance, well, such a huge building and such a tiny sign. The dated, soulless rooms are awful. It's like a cheap motel chain. Strawberry on sushi. The sushi is the worst I've ever had. Man, it's hideous. And David, the co-owner, has just admitted to me and to his wife that they're almost a million dollars in debt. $900,000. Right. We are in debt. Please don't say you don't know. I'm deeply sorry, and I'm, I'm sad that you're upset. I'm not upset at you. David should not have been hiding the financial status from me. Finding out she's been kept in the dark has angered Suki. Hey, I, I don't know what we are doing. I do the spending side, and you do the paying side. I don't share the finances with Suki. This is getting ridiculous. Because I'm afraid of hurting Suki's feelings. Calm down. No, I'm not going to calm down. While the owners argue, guests who have heard about my visit are arriving at the Chester. For dinner, I'm just going to go to the restaurant, which is just straight shoot right back there, all right? OK. And tonight, the restaurant and hotel will be full of people for the first time in years. I feel sorry for all of them. How long have you actually been waiting? I would say at least 45 minutes. 45 minutes. My apologies. How long have you been waiting? I'm sorry. Um, we've been here over about an hour. An hour. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I'm sorry. 
I've never seen anything like this before. It's insane how long these guests are waiting. So, what table's this, Suki? Oh, pardon me, I'm sorry. No, I just asked what table are you doing? The very first table. The very first table. It's been well over an hour, and Suki is only working on the first table. She's really struggling, and yet Dave is not stepping in to lend a hand. So, you know, over an hour in to service. Would you go in and help her? I would, but, you know, that's just not my territory. Right. Unfortunately. It's like the hotel's falling apart around you. If someone needs you in the kitchen, in the bar, in the reception, shouldn't you be multitasking? The uh, kitchen is her territory. OK. Well, so, I'm just asking. It's your no, hotel. I, I know, and I appreciate that. Yeah. If the kitchen's not David's territory, then maybe the rooms are. It's like wow, touch the blinds so and there's like That's it. dust all over them. Yeah, there's the kind of a beat up family. Mm -hmm. Looks like it came out of someone's house when they died. This is definitely not supposed to yeah. hang out. It seems to me that David has checked out. I don't understand what's going on here. This is not good. Suki okay. is totally out of her depth, having only dealt with one of the eight tables waiting for food. Oh, no. This is awful. Wow. What's wrong, darling? They said it wasn't cooked. Yeah. yeah, it's cold. Yeah, it needs more cooking. Mom, what's wrong? It's not cooked. You OK? I don't even want to get her in trouble. Why is she bursting into tears? You OK? I'm fine. What, uh, help me understand. What's going on? No, I just... The fish is undercooked in the centre. I know, I know. I just, like, don't... Just, don't what? Um... What is it that I'm missing, the point? I don't understand why she's in there playing head chef. Because we don't have anyone else. I mean, she became chef when my dad was in a car accident in 2008. He was bedridden for about six months, and then mom moved in to run the hotel the next day. My mom became a chef overnight. She came to the hotel, saw where she thought she was needed, and jumped in the kitchen. And ever since, she's been trying to make it work. And so how long has it been functioning like this? I mean, I think it's been in this state for about uh, two or three years. My dad has taken a step back and given up a little bit. OK. We have to be strong. Get I some am. fresh air. Get your eyes nice and bright, okay. OK? <laughs> Finally, I get it. The Hotel Chester has been in a tailspin since David's car accident. I wish Stuki or David had told me. Wow. Well, the beer garden. Interesting. Suki is just trying to make this work as best she can, but she is failing miserably. And David has hotel knowledge, but since the accident, he has taken a back seat. This whole place feels lost. The owners, the restaurant, the bedrooms, even this garden feels abandoned, just like the dinner guests. The customers are getting so pissed off. I'm going to have to do something, otherwise this place is going to go crazy. The Hotel Chester in Starkville, Mississippi, is on the brink of financial disaster. And I finally found out why. My dad was in a car accident in 2008. David's car accident sent the hotel into a sharp decline. Oh, no. Suki is drowning in the kitchen, trying to keep the business afloat. Wait, how long have you been waiting? I would say at least 45 minutes. We've been here over in about an hour. While her husband, David, isn't taking the reins, I can't see the diner starve. So I've dashed over to the local supermarket. The least I can do to help poor Suki is to cook up a few sliders before the customers walk out. Those diners are going to get any food, trust me. Tonight, it's coming from me. That's ridiculous in there. An hour for appetizers. Crazy. I'm so sorry about the delay. There's a little uh, beef slider from the barbecue in the garden. I don't want you guys washing away. Everybody got some food now? Yes. Feel a little bit better? The burgers have brought Suki enough time to get through the rest of dinner service without anyone walking out. After a long three hours, everyone has finally been fed. I'm sure Suki is as relieved as me that dinner service is over. How are you, Suki? Fine, fine. fine? Yes. That was a tough one. It was very tough. Yeah? Yes, sir. Why don't you guys get out of here, you go home, let's hook up first thing tomorrow morning. How far is home away from here? This is our home now, that room. What do you mean, this is your home? We live here. You live on site? Yes. You have an apartment here? No, right in there, there's a the handicap room. That's our, that's our home now. You live in the handicap room? Yes. Can you show me? 
since Dave's accident, I gave up everything. We have no money, so we had no choice but to live in this room. You live in here? Yes. There's not even a fucking window. No. Suki, I had no idea things were this bad. Well, I have to do what you have to do. I'm so sorry. Well, you know, sometimes you have the bad times. Can you get David? Okay. Please? I don't know what else to do. We have two children. I would like for them to be, um, not to have to worry about their mom and dad. Okay. So you were running this hotel. This was your baby. That's right. David? Yes. And sadly, you got involved in a tragic car accident. Yes. What happened? Yes. I broke both of my ankles and my back in two places. We nearly lost him. I mean, you know, I was pretty busted up, so I've been spending most of the past five years just recovering. Why did you sell your house? We couldn't make the payment, and... You foreclosed? Yes. That's terrible. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. And you come home every night now into this bedroom. Mm -hmm. This is awful. It is no way to live. I think you deserve something better. I promise I'm going to help you fix this place. OK? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Will you get some rest, please? Sometimes I will go seven days without stepping out of the hotel. And it's, uh, it's sad. I can't believe David and Suki have been living like this for years. I've never wanted to help two people so badly. I just hope I'm not too late. Rough night's sleep. Um, I couldn't stop thinking about David and Zuki downstairs where they are almost cooped up in that tiny room with no windows. I mean, my sleep was rough, but Christ, I can imagine going through that for three years. Like they've been doing. God. <sighs> David and Suki have sunk so far, they have lost sight of the outside world. If they lose this hotel, then they lose everything. Wow. I need to show them the potential of this place before it's too late. Like a sink. Come on. This is ridiculous. I can't even get my feet wet. David and Suki need to see how to make the Hotel Chester a success. I've got a plan. You've let this business swallow the both of you up. Yeah. It is like quicksand. You know, you've lost your way. Not only have you lost the connection with each other, but you lost the connection out there. Out there. The town, the students, the community. Both of you, come with me. I've got something to show you. They can save the life of your hotel. In the car, please. When was the last time you two went out for lunch? I can't, I can't remember. remember. You've never been out for lunch together? No. No. Wow. I want to show David and Suki a couple of places that are extremely successful because they tap in to what the community wants. Thank you, Dan. Oh, wow. Uh, lunch, are you always this busy? It's usually busier, actually. On an average weekend, uh, for instance, um, in the middle of summer, how many covers do you do? <laughs> Hundreds and thousands, probably. I mean, it gets so slam-packed. Thanks, thanks, Dan. Thank you, sweet. Can you believe? A thousand people a day here. Mm. A day. Envious. Good, honest. Yeah. Mississippian food. I just want 10%. Yeah. You just want 100 people a day? Yeah. 10%. That, that, that would be, oh. I did not know that there were that many people eating now. I've got one more place to show David and Suki to really make sure they see there are plenty of businesses doing well in the town. How cool is this place? Oh, this, is, a, this yeah. is really popular. You know, since my accident, I really haven't gotten around town much. You know, this business is 100 metres from your front door. Thank you. Yeah. Now, 
No, I don't. Please. How many covers are you doing a, a day? How many? What's the numbers? Uh, about 200 a day. 200 a day. Customers and uh, weekends generally double that. So an average of 200 guests a day, 400 of the weekends, and families as well, early families, evenings? Yeah. A lot of our business revolves around uh, college students. Thank you. The purpose of this outing is to show you how these businesses are drawing from the university, how they are open to every market, and it does translate to the rooms. You have a potential gold mine sat there. You have the traffic. You've got to tap into the community. That's what you're not doing. I'm, I'm convinced that's correct. I thought we were always welcoming students. Maybe we were wrong. So let's say, uh, yes, def definitely an eye opener. Now that I've shown David and Suki how much potential there is in Starkville, I need them to commit to turning the Hotel Chester around. That was nice. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I did too. To see it that busy for lunch was incredible. Well, the business is uh, booming there. So. David, you need to get your head back in the game. That's right. I got some great ideas, but you two have to be ready for change. Gordon, whatever direction you help us to get on, we're not going to waver off of that. <laughs> When I arrived at Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester, it was invisible on the main street. Hotel Chester entrance, well, such a huge building and such a tiny sign. And failing to appeal to the people who could make it a success, the college students. I'm convinced Suki and David are now ready for change. Whatever direction you help us to get on, we're not going to waver off of that. So now it's time to reveal the new hotel to David and Suki and their team. Oh my god, look at that! Ah! <laughs> oh my god! Sure as hell don't have to worry oh, about finding it now. Oh, that's wonderful! Come we on. have a sign! Welcome to the new oh Hotel Chester. You're no longer hidden on the main street. Now, customers, locals, will identify that it is a hotel. Is it big enough for you, David? Idiot. I think it's really, really that great. There is the biggest marketing tool you'll ever need. I love, I love it. it. Should we have a look inside? Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what Gordon has done with the inside of the hotel. Are you ready? Oh, oh my god. god! Oh my god! Oh my oh god! god. <laughs> <laughs> well, jump in. Go in, go in, go in. Oh Please, this god. is definitely <laughs> lovely. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Yes, I love it. Gone is the drab and the dullness. Now this room has character. Isn't this beautiful? I'm genuinely thrilled. If I could, I'd do a somersault backwards, and then if Gordon had let me, I'd kiss him. And even if he doesn't, I may drag him in and give him a big old kiss right on the damn lips. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, nice to see that you're happy. I'm very happy. Huh? It's more than I can have hoped for, and it seems to be the beginning of the end of our struggle. Do you think the parents of those 20,000 students yes. in the university will want to stay here now? Yes. All right, would like to see one more room? Yes. 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 Yeah. Let's go. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn, I love this room. Beautiful. I'm in a dream. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I can't ask more. Suki, this is not a chain hotel. This is your no. hotel. No, that's like right. Said, something that's to be proud of. Right. Oh. That's awesome. I've got something else to show you. This one, you're going to absolutely love. Ready? So excited. Please, I'd like to welcome you all to your stunning beer garden. There we go. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh. oh this yes. is what I call a beer garden. Damn. Oh, yeah. OK. Modern benches. So we have communal benches as well, large parties, uh, families. Additional space up there as well we've taken advantage of. Stunning furniture. That's nice. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. You go into the gazebo, we have the most amazing local beers. <laughs> Craft beers on tap. And these stunning craft beers that can rotate local beers to sort of promote stuff locally. That's awesome. The beer garden is awesome. I'm going to christen it myself, and somebody's going to have to carry me out of it before we open the doors to the public. There's one more thing I'd like to show you. Please, come with me. Yes, sir. I love this garden out here. Welcome to the new Hotel Chester's stunning beer gardens food. This hotel is in a vibrant college town in the heart of Mississippi. So I've created a menu that will attract a younger crowd 
and highlights Southern Comfort Food. Gone is the fusion confusion. <laughs> Suki, I'm sorry, all gone. Good. Southern Food fits the location. How can we be in Southville and not have stunning fried green tomatoes? Next to that, we have oyster bacon po' boy. Fried crispy oysters, crispy bacon with a stunning spicy remoulade. And Gordon's Burger. He's a chef, Ooh. and he, from time to time, comes up with some stunning recipes for burgers. Uh, this burger recipe um, is featured at Planet Hollywood in Vegas, and it is to die for. The new menu complements the state of Mississippi. I think it really suits the beer garden. Wonderful, wonderful idea. Suki, I have something for you that's going to make your life in the kitchen a whole lot easier. Bear with you one second, please. Now, I've got someone I'd like to introduce you to. Um, someone who's very special with two uh, unique assistants. Come through, please. Say hello to Enrica Williams. Now, she'll be Hotel Chester's new head chef. This lady is a very experienced chef, and she absolutely knows her stuff. I'm covering Enrica's salary. I'm taking care of that until this place picks up and you can afford to keep it yourself. You okay, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Having Suki in the kitchen kind of broke my heart every day, so I'm really looking forward to getting to know the chef and her apprentices and giving them all the support I possibly can. Suki, I want you to keep cooking, but I want you to have a bit of fun with it. And here's how it's going to work. Suki's rabata grill, skewers, chicken, beef, shrimp, yeah. with garlic, yeah. ginger, soy, marinade. That's a rabata, it's a personal touch. I love it, I love the change. Rabata is classic Japanese barbecue. When you think of a rabata grill, you think marinated, Japanese style, it's easy to execute, and you know what? It cuts a little bit of slack in the kitchen. It gives the kitchen a bit of time. <laughs> now all of you sit down and tuck okay. in. Thank you so much. Please. Thanks, Gordon. That looks so damn good. Doesn't it? With word out to the locals and the college students about the Chester's new vibe, this hotel is ready for business. How are y'all doing? Checking in? Checking in for two under Sanford. As the new younger clientele begin checking in, it's clear the renovated rooms are a hit. This is How awesome. How nice is this? It feels so big and so bright. Just wow. We need one of these comforters at home. While the rooms are proven to impress, the renovated beer garden is also creating a buzz with students, parents, and locals. Yeah. We need to get a little taste. Yeah, yeah everybody needs to order something different. <laughs> Fried green tomatoes. Do you want anything from the grill? That's my, uh, my little one. Of everything. What are you drinking, buddy? David seems reinvigorated as an owner and is really getting into it. Let me get your glasses. Just call them out to me. I'm thrilled to death. Just looking out there and seeing people eating good food and drinking good craft beers and conversing is uh, exactly the kind of environment I wanted out there. I need a burger medium, a fish and chips, pulled pork. And without Suki in the kitchen, the new head chef is doing a fantastic job of making wonderful meals and getting them out in a timely manner. That is it for high one. So now we're working high two. Make him sweat, goddammit. There you go. All right, buddy. The biggest thing Gordon has done is giving me a new sense of confidence and an opportunity to have my wife be my wife again. My favorite has been the uh, Gordon's hamburger, and I'm not a hamburger eater. And it's a fantastic, and it's a money back guarantee. I'll give you money back if you don't like it. Okay, <laughs> okay thank you. That's the best burger in Starkville, without a close yeah. second. It is. It is. So, this is the best so of everything. Now that the Hotel Chester is catering to what the locals want, and with Suki and David embracing the changes, I know my job here is almost done. Time to say goodbye. Hey, Gordon. I'm going to miss you both. We're going to miss you too. Look after each other. Embrace these students, their parents, and get this hotel full. When I see you behind that bar serving pints, yes, that sir. for me is you and your element. All right. Take care of yourselves. Yes, sir. OK? Well done, darling. Seeing you bouncing around out there tonight, happy in front of customers rather than stressed. Good to see you. Take care of yourself. <sighs> wow. Oh. I'm sorry, I forgot one little thing. Can you come with me, please? Yeah. One little thing before I go. The relaunch of the Hotel Chester is a huge success. Can you come with me, please? Yeah. Now Suki and David are on their way to making this hotel the talk of the town. Get in the car, please. But before I leave, I have one more surprise for them. Right, there's one more little thing I wanted to show you. Isn't this place beautiful? That gorgeous pool there. 
Both of you, come in for two seconds. Now, living in that tiny room with no windows is not the way to live. So, this is your new apartment. I rented this for the next six months, and I'm sure when the business kicks off, you'll have sufficient funds to oh, rent this apartment. Oh, I love it. Open plan kitchen, lounge. Have a quick look at the bedrooms through there. Beautiful. This is just what we really needed for Dave and me to get away. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Dave, this is nice. Oh, this is, this this is, is nice. This is so sweet. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Some time out. That is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. That's awesome. Uh, I'm just damn flabbergasted, actually. Being on site and not having time out of your hotel, you were blind to the potential on your doorstep. It was ridiculous. Thank you. We thought Gordon was just coming here to help us with the business. He ended up being helping us emotionally, our marriage. He very much wanted for us to be together. And that was so lovely. That's pretty damn awesome. No question mm -hmm. about it. Really, really nice. Yes. Thank you again. Now I'm going to hug you too. <laughs> Take care of you. Okay. I'm going to kiss you, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> spend some quality time together. Uh, you deserve it. Good night and good luck. All right. Bye, Gordon. Bye, bye now. It's a new start for me, and it's just definitely a new start for Suki. So I'm going to get naked in the pool right now. <laughs> it's so nice to see two people finally happy. Strawberries on fucking sushi. What was she thinking? Since my visit, the Hotel Chester's bookings have gone up. Have y'all stayed with us before? No, this is the first time. And the guests are enjoying the new improvements. It's just not generic, run of the mill. I think this is something special yeah. now. It does feel special. Like it's, it's actually had a touch of care given yeah. to it. With the new menu and beer garden, the hotel has become a local hit with the college kids. I don't know what this yeah. is, but I enjoy it. Craft beer you had? Uh huh. I mean, it was outstanding. You was know? it? Yes. I mean, the local brewery, Mississippi, plus you had a mix of everything. Oh, so you had the uh, sampler. Had the, sampler. Sampler was here. the new buzz around town means the Hotel Chester is now bringing in thousands of guests every weekend. And David and Suki are working as a team again. Next March 8th, was it booked? for a reception for about 150 to 200 people. So they want all of about 36 rooms for two nights. Gordon has saved us. Our relationship as husband and wife is better. We'll be, we are now partners. I'm gonna give y'all a hug. Come on, Jill. I'm Get so you. excited. Come on, guys. What Gordon has done for us means everything to us. And I think Gordon's helped to put the hotel on the map. Let's go suck face for a while. Of the <laughs> Tonight on Hotel Hell, I head to a Pennsylvania Inn. Where's the reception? Whose delusional owner... I want what I want. I know what I want. ...has completely neglected it. Ugh, look at all those bugs. Cockroach to welcome me on the toilet... No way. ...having a number two. I'm just like, I can't believe it. And what I discover will make you sick to your stomach. Un fucking believable Has this thing ever been washed? I don't even like to think of what I'm looking at. This is truly disgusting. That's not an inn. It's a fucking disaster. Two years ago, chef and restaurateur Ken Peixota had a dream. He bought the River Rock Inn in Milford, Pennsylvania, a charming town nestled in the stunning Pocono Mountains, just two hours' drive from Manhattan. It was a golden opportunity. The light shone upon me as it come this way. But soon after he got the keys, the dream turned into a nightmare. I was expecting to reach a certain number on room sales and I didn't hit one-tenth of that. I don't think Kenny has an idea how to run an inn. 
and the few guests that do come are far from impressed. There's nothing in the bathroom, no shampoo, no conditioner, soap, nothing. We have to go out and buy some. If I came in, I would probably check right back out. It is like old. <laughs> it's trying to be cozy, but it's not. It's hideous. If I wanted to stay at my grams, I could pack a bag and go stay at my grams. I'm not going to a B and B for that. If you buy an inn, you got to step up and be an innkeeper. We need to fill these rooms. We really do. Facing financial disaster, Ken was forced to move out of his house and into the inn. I said, Ken, you're making the biggest mistake. And he moved in and he turned Ken the miserable man. Ken is now 48, single, living in his crumbling inn and hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. The more the hotel fails, $2,868 in taxes that are still due, the more controlling Ken becomes. He just takes everything out on us to make our lives feel miserable just like his. You don't feel very good about yourself as an employee. Kind of chips away at your sense of self. I, I don't know what's going I, on. I, I, I told you I'd buy you a little time, so I And he's down here, everybody's walking on eggshells, everybody's afraid to do their job. They don't want to get yelled at. Flip, come here. Fuck yourself. Everybody threatens to quit. It's a daily event. Yeah, if things don't get better here, I'm definitely leaving. You know what? You really need to grow up and act your age. You're a 48-year-old man. Just get the fuck out of my face. The progression of events has just turned it all into a hot mess. And it doesn't matter what we do. It's just a hot, flippin' mess. We're rocking an American beast. Wow. All right, where's the reception? Anyone in? It's like a hallway, not a check-in desk, unless she's behind there. Hello, hello. Somebody's ashes are down there. Bloody hell. Oof. It's like my granddad's house. Hello. Uh, where's the reception? Uh, this is it, basically. This is it. The reception should be out in a minute. If you like, I'll, okay. I'll receive it for you. Thank you very much. Well, hello. Nice to see you. It's nice to see you. I'm Karen Lowshawn. It's a pleasure to meet you. I was a little bit nervous then. You, know, you were was... nervous? Yeah, honestly, because I was just like standing here on my own. Oh, um, well, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Um, it's confusing. Where's the reception desk? It's right here. Right. This is the reception desk. Can I just quickly show you something? Yes. I know. I don't mind getting stuck in. Well. Wow. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That is pretty bad. Yeah, that's not very pleasant. That's not at all pleasant. Uh, so. Would you like to go to your room? Uh, yeah. Follow me this way. OK. How old is this place? This hotel was built around 1880s. I take it was decorated in 1880 as it well. It kind of looks that way. For the first time yeah. and the last it's been, time. It's been a while for the rooms. There is a closet over here. Are they uh, special hangers just Oops. for me? Ooh. Yep. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I think the coat will stay. What is that? Extra, extra carpeting. We just got new carpeting here. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, safe for repairs. repairs. I've never had free carpet in my wardrobe before. <laughs> okay, just check my view. Ugh, look at all those bugs. And the blue bottle is stained for the week. Ugh. There's like a little forest of them down here. If we give these to your cleaner. Sorry. Ugh. It's like an insect funeral home. Truthfully, in the fall, there was like a ladybug problem. You'd bring it in and guest, and oh my gosh, there'd be like, you know, 50 bugs in the room. And so Ken and I would take care of that to get rid of the ladybugs for the people to stay. Um, now they've died. And look at this here. I think that's a cockroach to welcome me on the toilet. No way. Having a number two. I'm just like, I can't believe it. Look at that. Never had a cockroach committee welcome me on the john. Let's get out of here. Well, what else is on this floor? Well, this is the owner's quarters. And all these bits of furniture here, do, do people literally sit? That seems to work well to, for internet dust. service out here. OK, yes, so this is yes. the Wi-Fi chair? Yes, it really is. I'm going to bear that in mind if I need to check my emails. It's wow. very sketchy at best. OK. Far worse than I thought. Through Gordon's eyes, I was like, whoa, it's totally neglected. Now I will, uh, I'll unpack and get ready for dinner. Welcome to Milford. I mean, it's a joke. There we go. It was horrible. The place is filthy. Filthy. My first impressions of the inn have been dreadful. At least I can take my mind off things with some TV. Nothing. Look at that. I knew those shitty hangers would come in useful for something. Fucking come on. I can't believe we're Mr. Simpsons. Come on. Damn. 
This is embarrassing. $110 for this shithole. Just the general hygiene cleanliness is just shocking. The wardrobe's full of crap, and there's no excuse for dead insects and filth everywhere. It's like they've given up, and no one knows there's a hotel here because it's just not fit to rent these rooms out for the public. I mean, look at it. If this is what the bedrooms are like, God knows what dinner's going to be like. So far, at Milford, Pennsylvania's River Rock Inn, I've discovered outdated decor, bugs galore. Look at that. I've never had a cockroach committee welcome me on the John. And a TV that last worked in 1982. I've heard that the owner is a chef, so maybe the restaurant will be the River Rock's saving grace. OK. Good to nice see you. To meet you. And it's Ken, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is this American bistro outside? Yes. Is it a classic bistro? Or is yes. It... Everything made from scratch. That's nice. You're a chef by trade? Yes, I am. Are you not in the kitchen tonight? Uh, no, I'm not working on a line. So you've retired from cooking? Somewhat. Running the past, maybe, or? Uh, I'm running the other side. Right. I'm just watching all the food and letting and setting oh. everything out. It's hard to run this whole place by yourself. I have so many years of experience. I thought that when he hired me, he'd be able to let go a little bit, knowing that I could get this job done. But he just can't seem to let go. Um, and how would you rate the food, one to 10? Seven or eight. And if I asked you to rate your rooms out of 10, what would you give them? Four or five. I'm now shitting myself about dinner. Let's hope that the food is better than the rooms. Sure. The concept of an American bistro serving fresh local food in a country inn makes perfect sense. But I can't make any sense of this menu. Uh, well, uh, um, so I'm getting a little bit confused because we've gone Mexican on the quesadilla. We've jumped down to Thailand and then we've gone Italian for the calamari. What, what uh, American bistro? Yes, sir. Wow. Um, what would you recommend on the menu? We do a house smoked trout. I believe that it's a golden trout from uh, Northern California. It comes in frozen. You're recommending? that I eat frozen trout from you know, Northern California. You know, Chef, it, 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 it's, it's been only frozen once, right? Your head is sweating. It's a little hot in here, sir. You're dripping, yeah. It's me, I'm sorry, Chef. I know, I feel like I've got a leak in my fucking bar. I'm it's dying, your bald chef. head. Who puts these ideas together? That would be Kenny, Chef. OK, um, so give me a Thai sample of players. Yes, sir. Yeah? Uh, entree, dying to see that. Pork the Valdestano. Chop. I'm travelling around the globe in Milford. Enjoy. I'm appalled. I was promised an American bistro. Instead, I get a sampling from around the world. I was expecting fresh food, but I get recommended frozen fish. What's going on here? The Thai oh. sampler, chef. Are they made in-house? No, they are not, sir. No, thank you, James. Wow. It's just frozen crap, reheated, and how can you make a slice of chicken look so bland? I wouldn't give that Thai experience to my fucking dog. L6 is on the fire, too. James, I'm struggling. Yes, sir. Where's the chef from? Is he a local boy? Yes, he is. I think left to his own devices, he'd do very well. He's very limited on what he can use for ingredient-wise because he doesn't do the shopping. Who does the shopping now? Kenny does the shopping. So he's almost like cut the balls of the chef off. Yes, sir. M6, M14. The menu at the River Rock is pretty much outdated. Uh, it's Kenny's menu. It's been here for years. I don't agree with the menu, but it's, he's my boss. He pays my, my salary. I'm still going to get to that point where you're just kind of burnt out. Hi, Gordon Amory. How are you? Tough on this one. What do you do here? I bartend and I help manage. Ken's the chef, and Correct. the chef that's cooking is not allowed to cook his own dishes. Yeah. It's almost like he's sort of cut his balls off. Well, it's kind of what he does with all of us. Oh, really? He deflates you, strips your confidence, won't let you make any decisions, executive or otherwise. That's crazy. And it's... It's a lot of micromanagement. Why do you stay here? And I'm a loyal dog, unfortunately. I'd bend over backwards for him, but I, I'm, that bone's wearing thin. Ronaldo, yeah, extra Chef uh, Ramsey. That might be the golden ticket. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus Christ almighty. It's like someone's just dropped a fucking T-Rex foot on my plate. Holy that's the Valdestano, chef. Honestly. In fact, that might be a small Valdestano, chef. Oh, that's a small one? Yes, sir. I mean, it's like a meal for eight. That Valdestano can feed an Ethiopian family of 40. You know what I mean? Horrific. This is not what I would expect in a country inn. 
It's worse than a nasty roadside diner. I feel like I'm eating a fucking flip-flop with mayonnaise. Ken, the owner, looks like a zombie sleepwalking towards disaster. It's time to get everyone together and see if I can wake Ken up. How much money are you losing per month? Right now, about five to 7,000 a month. And that's on the decline? Correct. If those rooms aren't that busy, why are they so disgustingly dirty? They're, they're, they're dirty because I didn't check them. It's almost like we're robbing customers. When I arrived, you gave your food seven or eight out of 10. Yes. But the food was dreadful. Seth, how long have you been cooking? Almost 18 years. As a chef, 18 years in the business, are you proud of what you serve? Personally, I don't agree with Kenny's menu. It's on the menu, so. I want what I want. I know what I want. You can't hold people's hands in this business. If you don't fix this in, they've all lost their job. I honestly think that Kenny needs somebody to open his eyes so that he can see that everybody that works for him is capable and we're dependable, and we're here to help him increase his business and make it successful, and nobody's here to hurt him. I'm here to help. It's impossible, because you are not helping yourself. And it's not as if you're the captain of the Titanic, you're the fucking iceberg. Yet you haven't stared at yourself long enough in the mirror and actually understood where the issues are. You're looking at them. Good night. Jesus. I've had about all I can take for one day. It's time to get to bed. But based on how neglected these rooms are, I need to know exactly what I'm sleeping on. My black light will reveal any bodily fluids previous guests have left behind. Start off on the bed. Oh, Jesus Christ. There has got to be semen. This is Hotel Hell. Before my first night sleeping at the River Rock Inn in Milford, Pennsylvania, I decided to check it out with my black light to make sure there was nothing I wasn't seeing. And I was appalled to discover a vast spread of bodily fluid stains. Has this thing ever been washed? People pay to sleep in this bed. Unfucking believable. There is no way I'm sleeping on these sheets tonight. Luckily, I came prepared. <laughs> Shit, I forgot to turn off the lights. Oh, man, that was rough. Hopefully, a shower will wash away the memory of those awful stains. Shit! Look at this thing. Oh, fuck me. It's like being in Danny DeVito's house. Look at the shower. Come on. Oh, fuck. I feel dirtier now than I did before I got in here. Shit. It's freezing. I don't think the staff or the owner have any idea how revolting it is to be a guest here. I want you to come upstairs with me. I want to show you something, please, all of you. Time for a wake-up call. Good morning. Good morning. These are the guests that have been staying in the hotel. Now, you've all experienced over the last 24 hours a sleepover. And what I'm here to do is to help fix this place. I can't do it without your feedback. My biggest complaint was this morning when I took a shower, um, I had water up to my ankles before I got out. My shower head, I probably showered from here down because the shower head hit me about here. There was like bugs on the floor. And then I was sitting on the bed and then I saw a bug on the door too. I have back problems and this morning it was really hard to get out of bed. Um, just because you could feel the springs. The big question for me is that on the back of last night's experience, who would stay here again? A little raise of hands. I probably wouldn't come to stay again. Really? No one? Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Thank you. I hope Ken is starting to see how his lack of effort at the inn is driving guests away. There's one more thing I want to show him. If this doesn't wake him up, nothing will. I'm going to show you something that is pretty horrific. Come in. Uh, just stand over there, please, three of you. Glad 
glasses on. Brace yourself, Karen. Oh, my goodness. I'm disgusting. It's awful. I don't even like to think of what I'm even looking at. It's like a fucking galaxy. This is foul. Absolutely foul. I'm shell-shocked a little bit. It's disgusting. It's truly disgusting. The seeing this makes me sick to my stomach. Oh, dear. I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm just... It is a horror show. It was horrifying. I was thinking how many times has this room even been rented without being cleaned for all that to be there. Ken, you're running a fucking hotel, not a brothel. It is fucking disgusting. Start taking responsibility. I've discovered some disgusting things at the River Rock Inn. Horrific food. I will give that to my fucking dog. Dead bugs. It's like an insect funeral home. And I've worked out what the source of all the problems is. It's Ken. And it's not as if you're the captain of the Titanic. You're the fucking iceberg. He's in way over his head and making everyone's life miserable as a result. And his incompetence has let the inn fall into a shocking state. It's like a fucking galaxy. It's awful. I don't even like to think of what I'm even looking at. This is truly disgusting. It's a true slap in the face. I apologize to everybody who slept there before that I put you through that. I think it's horrible. I hope Ken realizes now that there's more to running an inn than just owning an inn. This place needs to change, and change fast. Yes. We need garbage bags. Elise yeah. just went to get some. First up, the inn needs to be cleaned, so it's a place fit for paying guests to stay in. I put the whole team to work to clean the inn from top to bottom. And I'm going to address the worst problem myself. Well, hello, madam. Very well, thank you. Is there any chance I could put this through a wash? Yes, when do you need it by? By tonight. That's yes, possible. definitely. Would you mind? Yeah. But could you do a, a sort of extra strong cleaning product? It's pretty rancid. OK. So uh, be careful. We'll be done. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Careful you don't catch anything. fresh. While the staff finish cleaning the inn, I want to have a snoop around the kitchen and see if there's any more clues as to how Ken is running this place. Notes everywhere. Who writes notes like this? Why do I have to ask weekly for the fish to be iced down? Do not take this sign down. Do not take my pens by your own. If you use this drill, replace it. Or I'll buy a new one with your paycheck. Bloody hell. Charming. Ken definitely has issues. Bloody hell. If you eat these cookies, take one to your next job interview. I mean, my god. I'm surprised anyone still fucking works here. This guy is incredible. That's not management. This is insane. I can't believe Ken is so passive aggressive with his staff. I need to talk to him and find out what the hell is going on. I come across all these little notes about don't take this. If you do, take it to your next interview. You tell me, what's going on? I, I don't like being taken advantage of. I have some hard times with things that they do. But why aren't you talking to them? Why aren't you leading them? Why aren't you motivating them? Why aren't you getting close to them? The secret of any good management is about communication, understanding, and putting yourself on their level. Maybe I, I look at it as they should be on my level. Who are you kidding? Come with me, I want to show you something. Take a seat here. Ken thinks he's managing his staff, but I think he's bullying them. He needs to see how he's making them feel. I've set up a monitor in one of the bedrooms, and I'm going to force Ken to watch a staff meeting. I think this might bring about the change this place desperately needs. Stay here. I'll be back in five. <sighs> I came here to help. What I'm frustrated about is what I'm discovering. I snooped around the kitchen. I come across this, a cookie jar. If you eat these cookies, take one to your next job interview. 
We call those Kenny's nasty grams. I mean, is this a joke? Or no. is this? No, that's, that's real. I put those notes up because my staff needs reminders for me to tell them to do the simplest tasks. They can come off as degrading, but I don't know if they get the hint the other, any other way. Yeah. What in the hell is going on? Look at this one. Don't take my pens, buy your own. I think he hides behind, he's afraid of confrontation. It's passive aggressive, Seth. How does that make you feel? He causes us all to be discouraged in the jobs that we have. There's so many people here that really know their jobs well, but we have become discouraged, and when people become discouraged, they don't do the things that are necessary. There's no gratitude. Like, so when you say to us, why, why are we like this? We're just spiritless. He's really just sucked the soul out of every one of us. He's just a spirit sucker, honestly. I've locked Ken, the owner of Milford's River Rock Inn, into a bedroom where he can watch a staff meeting on TV. If you eat these cookies, take one to your next job interview. The staff have told me his management style has destroyed their morale. Is this a joke? No. Or is this... That's, no, that's him. Really... Every day. <clears throat> There's no gratitude. Like, so when you say to us, why, why are we like this? We're just spiritless. He's really just sucked the soul out of every one of us individually over the period and length of time. He's just a spirit sucker, honestly. Anne-Marie's comments about me brought tears to my eyes. Her especially, because she's one of my closest friends. It did hurt me. What do you want to see change from him? Let the people, his team, do the work that he's hired us to do. This place can succeed, providing that you stay on track. You've got to stand up to him. Let me go and get him. I hope that seeing that finally got through to Ken. It's time to reveal to the staff that he was upstairs watching every word. Wow. Of what my staff thinks about me, it's awakening. It, it really saddens me because I would do anything for them and I feel that they don't see that. I need to change. I uh, watched everything you said. And I apologize. I never wanted to suck the life out of any of you. And uh, I think I control this place, but realize maybe I don't need to control. You have a good team here. And if we are gonna move forward, you have to give them ownership of their own areas. Uh, Seth, yep. you've got to get that mojo back and I'm falling back in love with what you've employed to do. Uh, Karen, uh, you care and that's what being a good innkeeper, that little personal touch. Mm -hmm. You should have a, a hold on the inside of this business as sort of filling the place, like the inn hotel manager. So I want you to have that level of responsibility. I think what I learned the most was that I need to give people the opportunity to run this place. I can't micromanage like I always did. I really hope that he backs off and lets us all do our jobs. He just has to put the faith in us, and I know that our team can accomplish anything. I think Ken's warming to the idea of change, but I don't feel I've got to the heart of why he looks like a man under such extreme pressure. Kenny, have you got two minutes? Sure thing. Come, in? Come on in. There's got to be more to this than money. Yesterday, in many ways, I started to believe you'd, you'd given up. Today, we turned the corner. We've got to stay on that track. I thought I, I thought I could control this place, and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. It's not working. It seems like the pressure you're under is not just financial, right? In order to buy this place, I borrowed from my brother. I said, I think I can really make this work, and, and the price is affordable. Would you help me? After we met with the owners, he went to the truck and says, how much do you want me to write the check out for? Wow. He's my idol. And my mother, too. My mother, it wouldn't happen without her help either. They said, I can move to this restaurant, to this place, and the only way I could do it is I need some money from you. I needed $50,000. And she also said, just take it. So both their houses are tied into here. 
So if this place fails, you have let them down and yourself. This entire place wouldn't be here without my brother and my mother's help. I want the business to succeed so they don't have to have a worry. I don't want to ever let them down. And you can't do it alone. Yeah, I know. Do you have a girlfriend in here or? No, no. Don't take this the wrong way, but it needs a, it needs a woman's touch. Yeah. It needs a bit of a feminine approach. It needs that kind of love, no? Yes. It's been kind of rough. There's been no lady in my life because I haven't been had a chance to go out there and, and even meet or date women. I just want to meet that special person. And just whew, big deep breath. It's the first time I smiled in a while. Cheers. The River Rock Inn has come a long way from where we started. The once filthy inn is now clean, and Ken, the owner, has seen the error of his ways. I apologize. I never wanted to suck the life out of any of you. But before this place is ready to welcome guests, the staff need to understand the true meaning of hospitality. This place is definitely on the road to recovery, but I think this team needs some training. So I've asked a very special friend, Ramesh Sedwani from Caesars Palace, to come actually show them how it's done. Hi, Gordon. Good to see you. Hi, how nice. are you? Well, I'm Dean, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Please, take a seat. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> it's great to see you. So, the customer focus is critical, isn't it? Very much. And in your mind, what are the golden rules? On, in no, the first 60 seconds. You have to approach your guests with a big smile on your face because that just opens all kinds of doors. Find little ways to, to make a lasting impression on that guest and let them know that their comfort and their enjoyment is your primary objective. And it sounds simple, but it's not that simple, is yeah. it? If you practice all the basics, sure. the rest of it will just fall into place. It has to be natural. People know when you're not being sincere. The good news is the team here, you know, their heart is in the right place, but they are clearly lacking training. Okay. Uh, the owner doesn't smile that often, so. Oh, okay, all right. Let me go and get the team. Okay. Thanks, Ramesh. Kenny, we've got someone uh, very special I want to introduce you to. Please, come through. I'd like to introduce you to a very, uh, very dear friend of mine. Please. My name is Ramesh. 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 Very nice to meet Karen. you. He's very from nice Caesar's you. Palace. Karen. He's flown in oh, from so Vegas. I asked Ramesh, Ramesh to come and teach you how to greet customers. Holy mackerel, he's the guy that runs Caesar's Palace coming to teach my staff. How lucky of a guy am I? He's here to help you and to show you within 60 seconds of those guests arriving through that door, what we need to hit. First impressions go wrong, they never forget it, okay? Why don't we have a look at what they normally do? Stop straight away and we restart. Okay. okay. Stop. As soon as you see a guest coming through there, you can come out here and reach for the door, open the door and have a big smile on your face. It looked like you just lost your arm. Here we go. Bollocks. Okay, put a lot more into it. Okay. It's gotta be, good afternoon. It's great to have you here, welcome. It was kind of hard. I'm gonna work to get better at greeting people. Good afternoon, nice to have you here. Welcome to the River Rock Inn. Thank you very much. Sir. Stop. Before he extends his hand out to you, you should have extended your hand out to him. I feel like I'm um, being yelled at by a drill sergeant. You're out, on the stairs, Karen, your turn. Karen, you have an incredible smile. I was a little nervous. Gordon's in the back and he's chanting, you know, you could do this, you could do this. You no know, one give it a pep talk. Here we go. Good afternoon, I'm Karen. Welcome Good to the River Rock. Good afternoon. My name is James Sanfilippo. I'm here to check in. Welcome, Mr. Sanfilippo. Come right this way. I see that you'll be staying with us for the next week? Yes, ma'am, possibly more. Of course, that would be wonderful. Uh, we have you staying in our king-size room, which is on the second floor. Absolutely lovely room with a pretty view out the front of the house, so that's a nice place to be. Nice. Yay! Finally! <laughs> Amazing. Karen is a superstar. She really is. That was very well done. Gordon helped me realize that I have people that I can rely on, and instead of being the hands-on owner, I should be more of the overseeing owner, which I really need to be. Very um, well done. Very right. Well done. Now that Ramesh has taught the staff how to make the right first impression, I'm going to try and help Ken boost his self-esteem, which will make him a much better innkeeper. Ken, meet Barbie. Barbie, meet Ken. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've flown in Barbie Hatch, a Hollywood stylist, to give him a new look. This one's a little bit too big for you. 
A different shirt, maybe? While Barbie gets to work on transforming Ken, I want to check out the inn's website and see if that's also in need of a makeover. Okay, this is supposed to be the Wi-Fi chat and I can't even get any signal. Shit. Shit. One bar. There's an amazing competition in this town, so in order to stand out and sort of be somewhat different, you do need a great website. My goodness, the opening page on the website looks as old and frumpy as the interior of the bedrooms. I mean, it's so dated. It's like it's been put together on a $20 budget. Shocking. He obviously doesn't realise that 80% of hotel bookings are done online today, so if you've got no decent website to follow, then you're absolutely screwed. Ah, uh, come back to me, Signal. Let's see. It's great. It really works. You don't have to put on a parka. It just throws around your neck, you're done. Let's do it. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're so welcome. Ken's makeover is finished, and I'm going to take him out on the town. But first, let's see what his staff think. Whoa! Your new innkeeper. Very, very nice. Yeah? Yes, very handsome. <laughs> Let's go. I'm taking Ken to a local bar. I think that meeting the right girl will give him a great confidence boost. The sort of positive energy that will light up the river rock and make Ken a pleasure to deal with. What a lovely little place. Take a seat. How dapper does Kenny look? He looks very dapper. He does, doesn't he? Thank you. New, 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 new design. Made, right? <laughs> How can that man still be single? Who's like, single? Kenny's single. No. Oh, we gotta find you a milk. No. We, we, no. Oh, we do know we someone. Know somebody. Kenny, I was friends with <laughs> so, I do. Really do. Invite him at dinner tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, River Rock Inn, yes, tomorrow night. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Relaunch it oh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, Relaunch it tomorrow night. It's going to be awesome. So, can we have a little toast yes. to Kenny finding a girlfriend? Yes. A girlfriend to Kenny. Yes. Come on, girlfriend. It was, it was really nice. great ego boost. I felt like the king boy. He really set me up. Oh, thank you very much. If I fail now, I'm really a loser. <laughs> Big day tomorrow. See you in the morning. Best wishes. Good night. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Honestly, I've never seen a man change so much. Um, let's just hope he's not late for breakfast in the morning. <laughs> My design team worked through the night to transform Milford, Pennsylvania's River Rock Inn. And now it's time to reveal the changes to Ken and his team. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? Hi. Very good. 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 Seth, how are you feeling? Great, great. Excellent. All of you this week have really put so much effort into get this in back on track. So I'm greatly appreciative for your efforts. It's only fitting, okay, that we start the relaunch with a proper sign. Take a look at this. It's not the old sign from the old restaurant. It's a beautiful sign. River Rock Inn and restaurant. The best food and lodging in the Poconos. How cool is that? That's very cool. Does it look nice? It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Ready to go inside? Yeah? I'm excited. Let's go. Come through. Are you ready? It's wow. a beautiful place to live and stay. Oh Not a place you've got to come and die. First off, <laughs> we have a stunning colour on the walls. Gone is that hideous paper. So now it's in keeping with a rustic charm. And all the bugs are gone too. The changes are just incredible. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed by them. I'm blown away. Totally blown away. We replaced that dinosaur TV with a new flat screen. <laughs> Guess what? It works. <laughs> OK. Replacing the mattresses. Stunning linen. Oh, my goodness. New table lamps. And guess what? Gone are the spunk stains. Karen, the only Milky Way from the skies above. Yes? <laughs> Karen, what do you think? I, I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's still a country inn, but it's a country inn of the year 2012. <laughs> Let me show you the room next door, please. This is incredible. This is just amazing. Gordon just did wonders here. Oh, by the way. What? <laughs> I've updated your router, OK? Oh, so you can have nice. Wi-Fi. In, in the room? Inside the room. Oh, my god! <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> amazing! Hello! I'm blown away. You're blown away? I'm blown away. Excellent. Oh, wow. Please, come in. Wow! <laughs> Look at this. Come in, come in, come in. Oh, wow. When I first arrived, the check-in was so confusing. Now, yep. the guests come in, they sit down, 
we offer them a coffee, a glass of water, and then we'll go to actually booking them in online. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> nice! How cool is that? It's so awesome. Isn't it? Amazing. Now, how much do you spend on linen a month? A fortune. A fortune. Underneath tablecloths, you had these stunning natural tables which were just being hidden at a ridiculous expense. Focus on the linen upstairs in the room. <laughs> Before Gordon was here, I just had a restaurant. Now I have an inn, I have a destination. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to the relaunch tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun. You like it? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you like it? Good man. <laughs> With a new decor and Ramesh's expert training. Hello, welcome to the River Rock. I'm Karen. Along with a newly inspired Ken. Nice to see you. How you been? Hi. Enjoy your dinner. Thank, Thank you. you. The River Rock is in a much better place. Time to go. When I got here, Ken, honestly, that guy was a hopeless innkeeper. Almost like someone had given up. But, yeah, we've turned him around. It's almost like he's sort of, he's got his mojo back. And now, River Rock has every chance of succeeding. But I tell you what, I've seen a lot of skies, but not quite a Milky Way like that. Fuck me. As I prepare to leave, guests are arriving for the relaunch. And I noticed some familiar faces from the bar last night. And as promised, they've brought a friend. How are you, my darling? Nice to meet you. Yes. Oh, you're the dad. <laughs> <laughs> have a little peep, have a little peep, have a little peep. First impressions. He looks cute. He looks cute. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I can feel a good night coming on. <laughs> wow. Joey, I need three onion soups, two fish cakes and fish fingers. With Ken trusting his staff and not micromanaging, he's able to spend more time on the floor. Salute, my friends. Leaving time to charm, the Milfs of Milford. Hello, how's everyone tonight? Hey, Welcome. And good this is... Hi, Ken. Ken. Very nice to meet you. Pleasure. Ken. Ken. Nice to meet you. Nice to Follow me. Oh, God. Ooh, voice is Come on, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited to see them. I was, she was very pretty. I look forward to talking with her. Here we go, ladies. <laughs> Thank you so much. Salud. My first impressions of Ken. He looks cute, uh, very um, gentleman-like. <laughs> see how the night goes. Salud, ladies. Thank you very much. The inn is buzzing and Ken has invited some very special guests to see the place at its best. And this is my brother. Oh, how are you, sir? Good to see you. Likewise, good to see you too. And, and my mother. Hello, madam. How are you? Hi, so how are you? Very well, thank you. Nice to meet you. There's no words to express how proud I am of Kenneth. Upstairs, the guests are loving the new rooms. And downstairs, they're loving the fresh local menu that Chef Seth and I put together. Really, really good. Delicious. That's really good. Before I can leave, there's one last thing I need to take care of. Can I have your cell number, please? Hey, not for me, for Ken, come on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Hey, listen, thank you so much for coming tonight. Oh, I really thank appreciate you it. For us. Thank, thank you. Much. Ken, come here. Okay. Now, how are you I'm feeling? I feel wonderful. Honestly, at the beginning of the week, I thought you were going to sort of almost, I suppose, fall to the wayside. But you bounced back, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you, I'm grateful okay. for your help. Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> uh, Kim's cell number, it's for you. You can't have a better wingman than Gordon Ramsay, holy shit. He gave me a number, it's in my pocket. <laughs> no more sticky notes, nothing. Let them do it. Right. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love you, this is the greatest. Thank you so much. Gordon made me realize that I should be less of the hands-on owner who can't see the forest through the trees. From here on, I'm empowering my staff to make their own decisions, and I'm gonna support them. No more micromanaging for me. What a week. What a galaxy. Fuck me.